Snape and Lily are both tragic characters, but in very different ways, and they each played an important role in each other's lives. In this video, I'm going to go through the entire timeline of Severus Snape and Lily Evans, starting with their origin, going to their downfall, and finishing it off with the aftermath of their relationship. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button. It will greatly help the channel with the algorithm. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, and you can also follow me on all of my other social medias, all of which are linked down below, and all of which house similar content that I make here on this channel. Before we start, I want to thank today's sponsor, Timu. I spent some time shopping on the site and got a bunch of really great items for me and my family. I got a calming dog bed for my dog Loki, which he absolutely loves. I also got some sneakers I've been wearing to golf, and they make all the difference out on the course. On top of that, I got a smartwatch that has been super helpful to stay in shape tracking all of my workouts, a beach blanket that I'm excited to use with summer being just around the corner, a remote control car that Loki loves to chase around, and an electric mosquito killer that will also come in handy for the summer. On top of having great prices, Timu also offers free shipping and free returns for up to 90 days. They also offer their price protection policy, which says that if you order something and the price drops within 30 days of purchasing it, you can request a partial refund. And the great thing about this sponsorship is that new app owners can choose one free product as a gift by scanning the QR code that's in the top right corner of the screen or by clicking the link in the description. Don't wait, go check it out and get some amazing products for a great price. Now that I've said that, let's get the video started. Going to the year 1960, Lily and Snape were born just 21 days apart, Snape being born on January 9th and Lily being born on January 30th. Lily Evans grew up in Cokeworth, England, and Snape grew up in Spinner's End, a shabby suburb of the city Lily grew up in. Snape was born to a wizard, so he was aware of his magical ability, but Lily was born into a muggle family, so she had no idea she was a witch. Moving to the year 1969, the nine-year-old Snape had no friends, and he soon took to watching a red-headed girl and her older sister at the park. He would watch them from behind the bushes, and he was very taken by the red-headed girl named Lily. He watched Lily do many things that only a person gifted with magic could do, and this made him come to the conclusion that she was a witch, which only made Severus like her even more. After watching the two sisters for a while, he started to imagine and even plan how he would introduce himself. However, when the time did come, it did not go the way he had hoped it would. After watching Lily display her magic to her sister Petunia, and after Petunia asked Lily how she did it, Snape took this opportunity to make his presence known. He told the two girls that Lily was obviously a witch, and he said this with an air of nervous excitement. Now looking at this from a muggle perspective, calling someone a witch would not be a good look, so it did not go the way that Snape had planned. Lily became very offended by these words. After Snape called Petunia a muggle, though the girls did not know what this meant, they were offended and Petunia told Lily that they were leaving. As they walked away, Lily glared at Snape and Snape was left there feeling awful. Though the first meeting didn't go very well, Snape was able to approach Lily without her sister being there and this made all the difference. Lily had thought a lot about what Snape had said and she realized that it might add up with all of the things she could do. This made her less hesitant when Snape approached her again. They met up loads of times over the next few months, and they became good friends. Severus was taken by Lily's beautiful green eyes that he could not take his eyes off when they talked. Snape told her all about the magical world, Hogwarts, the Ministry of Magic, and even Azkaban and its guards Dementors. They also talked about other stuff, Snape opening up to Lily and telling her about his parents who constantly fought in front of him. Lily was close with her sister Petunia during all of this, and Petunia was the first of many who would tell Lily not to hang out with Snape. Petunia tells Lily that Severus is lying about everything and that they weren't really magical. Lily brought this up to Severus one day when they were hanging out sitting on the grass, and Snape assured her that it was real for them, but it wasn't real for Petunia who was just a muggle. During this conversation, Lily asked if using magic outside of school the way she had been would land her in Azkaban because Snape had told her that underage wizards were forbidden from doing this. Snape responded saying, you're not going to end up in Azkaban, you're too, but he cut himself off and turned red. When Lily asked if being a muggle-born made a difference in the wizarding world, Snape hesitated but then said no, it doesn't make a difference, and this is an important detail to remember. Just then, Petunia of all people fell out of a nearby bush, and Snape accused her of spying on them. Petunia quickly fired back, making fun of Snape's shirt, 
and following that insult, a tree branch fell from the tree above them and landed on Petunia. She fell down crying, and Lily rounded on Snape, asking if he made that happen. Snape desperately said that he didn't, but Lily didn't believe him. She couldn't believe that her friend had tried to hurt her sister, and she gave him a burning look with those green eyes before running after Petunia. Snape was left there miserable and confused. The two didn't see each other for some time, but moving to 1971, both Lily and Severus received their Hogwarts letters. This made the two reconnect, Lily wanting to talk about it with Severus, and this mended their friendship. One day when they were hanging out at Lily's house, they passed Petunia's room, and Snape saw a letter that was clearly from Hogwarts. He convinced Lily that they should look at it, and the two friends discovered that Petunia wrote to the headmaster asking if she could go to Hogwarts too. Lily brought this letter up to her sister right before she boarded the Hogwarts Express, and this led to the two sisters never being the same again. Lily was heartbroken, and she sat in a compartment of the train looking out the window. When Snape entered, she became resentful of him because it was his idea to read that letter. Snape then made an error in judgment when Lily said Petunia hates her now, and he replied saying, so what? Lily shot him a look of deep dislike after that, but Snape saved the situation by getting Lily excited that they were finally going to Hogwarts, the thing they had been talking about for years. Snape said that she better be in Slytherin, and this introduced an important person in the timeline of Lily and Snape. James Potter cut in, and he talked down on Slytherin House, saying he wanted to be in Gryffindor. Snape made it clear that he did not like that house, and a young Sirius Black then chimed in and made fun of Snape with a brutal insult. This made Lily stand up, give the two boys a look of dislike, and told Severus that they were leaving. As they left, James and Sirius gave Snape the nickname Snivellus, which they would use every time they bullied him. Also, we just went over another theme in Snape and Lily's relationship timeline, Lily standing up for Snape. When they got to Hogwarts, the worst thing that could happen in Snape's mind happened. Lily was sorted into Gryffindor while he was sorted into Slytherin, meaning they would spend much less time together than he would have liked. When the sorting had announced Lily's house, Snape let out a tiny groan, and as Lily was rushing over to the Gryffindor table, she took a moment to look back at Snape with her beautiful green eyes and gave him a sad little smile. Over the next few years, despite being in separate houses, the two continued to be best friends, Lily even giving Snape the nickname Sev. However, both of them also joined friend groups in their own houses, who they spent the majority of their time with. During that time, Lily continued to dislike James Potter and Sirius Black, as they constantly bullied her friend. Moving forward to their third year in 1974, Lily did not like some of the friends that Snape was hanging around with, and this led to her confronting him about it as they walked along the Hogwarts grounds. Snape said that he and Lily were supposed to be best friends, and Lily assured him that they were, but she was a bit turned off by Severus' friends Avery and Molsiver, both of whom in the future would eventually become Death Eaters, so Lily was right to worry. Nevertheless, Snape defended his friends, saying they were just having a laugh when Lily brought up an incident where they used dark magic on a girl. Snape defending them made Lily question his judgment, and this immediately made Snape bring up James Potter and his friends. Lily asked why he was so obsessed with them, and Snape replied, replied saying that he just wanted to make sure Lily didn't think they were as great as everyone else said, and the intensity of his gaze as he said this made Lily blush. Lily pointed out, however, that Potter and his friends didn't use dark magic like Snape's friends, and Lily told Snape that he was being ungrateful, referring to a rumor she had heard where James saved Snape's life. This made Snape rageful, telling Lily that he was just saving his and his friend's neck, and James was not playing the hero in that situation. What Lily didn't know was that Sirius had told Snape to go down the Whomping Willow path, which would have resulted in Snape being face to face with Remus Lupin in his werewolf form. When James heard this, he chased after Snape and pulled him back at the last second before Werewolf Lupin attacked him. There's a clear reason why Snape is upset about Lily bringing this up the way she did, but he responds in the absolute worst way. He tells her that he wasn't going to let her say that, and Lily's eyes became slits as she aggressively questioned him on what he just said, not believing he had disrespected her like that. Snape tried to recover, saying that he didn't want to see Lily be made a fool of because James Potter liked her. Snape again doubled down, saying that James wasn't as great as everyone seemed to think he was, and his body totally relaxed when Lily said that James was an arrogant toe rag. This confirmed to Snape that his greatest enemy had not won over his best friend, at least not yet. Over the next few years, Lily's Gryffindor friends, like her sister Petunia, constantly asked why she hung out with Snape, saying they didn't understand it. 
However, keeping with the theme of Lily always standing up for Severus, she continued to make excuses for her best friend, completely ignoring the fact that he hung out with people who she and many others believed would become Death Eaters in the growing war. When it came time to learn the Patronus charm, both Snape and Lily were successful in doing so, but Snape always hid his Patronus from Lily for one reason. His Patronus took the shape of a doe, the same shape that Lily's took. This was something that happened when one person truly loves the other, which was absolutely the case for Snape. He was in love with Lily Evans, and for the first time, his Patronus taking the shape made him face those feelings. Fast forwarding to June of 1976, following their OWL exams, Lily was sitting by the lake and she soon noticed that James and Sirius were tormenting Severus. She went over and immediately told them to leave her alone, another example of Lily standing up for Severus in this timeline. She asked James and Sirius what Snape did to them, and when James said that it was Snape simply existing that made them bully her, everyone around them laughed, but Lily did not. Lily called James out saying he wasn't funny and told him that he was an arrogant bully. Snape watched all of this from the ground, and he became extremely upset when James said he would stop bullying Snape if Lily agreed to go on a date with him. Lily refused, of course, but Snape became angry that James would make such a request. He lashed out by slicing James's face with a spell, but James responded faster than Snape could recollect himself, and Snape was now hanging upside down. His robes fell over him, revealing Snape's graying underpants, and the crowd cheered, Sirius and James roared with laughter, and even Lily had her furious expression twitch for a second as if she were about to smile. She gathered herself quickly though and yelled at James to put him down. James obliged but did so by tossing him further in the air so that Snape would land hard on the ground. Sirius then shot the Petrificus Totalus spell at Snape, making Snape go rigid and frozen. Lily yelled as loud as she could, telling them to leave Snape alone, and she even pulled out her own wand. She made them unfree Severus with a counter curse, and they told him that he was lucky Lily was there to save him. Snape then uttered the words that he would regret for the rest of his life. He got up and said, I don't need help from filthy little mudbloods like her. Lily was absolutely shocked by these words from her supposed best friend. She blinked, then told Snape that she wouldn't bother in future, and feeling hurt and insulted, she insulted Snape, saying, And I'd wash your pants if I were you, snivelous. Using the name that Sirius and James used when they bullied Snape, showing just how far Lily had been pushed. Now, this interaction is a culmination of many different things. Snape might have seen Lily about to smile when he was upside down, which might have made him say these words, but nevertheless, it was an awful thing to say. Especially when you think back to many years ago when Snape assured Lily that being a Muggleborn would not make a difference. Lily also finally realized what everyone had been warning her about with Snape, and she effectively decided she no longer wanted to be friends with him. Later that night, Snape realized that he had just called the love of his life and his best friend the worst thing he could have possibly called her. He rushed to the portrait hole of the Gryffindor common room, and he begged other Gryffindors to get Lily to come out. It was only when he threatened to sleep out there that Lily came out to talk to him. He immediately said he was sorry, but Lily said she wasn't interested in his apology. Snape continued, saying that he never meant to call her a mudblood, but Lily questioned how something like that could just slip out. Lily had no pity in her voice, as she told him that it was too late, and that she was done making excuses for him. Then, when she mentioned him hanging out with his Death Eater friends, Snape said nothing, confirming to Lily that that is what Snape was aiming to be. She called him out, saying he didn't even deny it, and Snape began to open his mouth, but then closed it without speaking. Lily told Snape that she couldn't pretend to ignore this Death Eater lifestyle anymore, saying that he had chosen his way and she had chosen hers. Snape tried one last time to say he didn't mean what he said, but Lily again called him out, saying that she knew he had called other Muggleborns mudbloods, and why was she any different? Snape did not have a response to this, and Lily gave him one last scornful look with her beautiful green eyes, and she headed back through the portrait hole. That was the end of Snape and Lily's seven-year friendship but that's not the end of their timeline. 
Moving to September of 1976, Snape was forced to go through his first year of Hogwarts without being friends with Lily. You can imagine that it was rough for him, but the following year in September of 1977 would be even worse, because around this time, both Lily and James were made head boy and head girl for Gryffindor, and the two started dating shortly after that. Snape had to watch his worst enemy, the person Lily had always told him not to worry about, be with the girl he loves. There was nothing Snape could do though, he had to stomach this, and he was so hurt that she got over their friendship so fast while he still had such strong feelings for her. Here and there, Snape would get a little bit of his anger out as he and James would go at it, but Lily never knew about this. Moving to June of 1978, they all graduated from Hogwarts, and just as Lily had said, Snape had chosen his way, and that was becoming a Death Eater for Voldemort. In my humble opinion, and this is just my thoughts, I do not think that Snape would have become a Death Eater had his friendship with Lily continued. Especially because, and not to jump ahead, he did end his Death Eater lifestyle for Lily. But alas, in the end, Snape did call Lily a mudblood, and their friendship did end, so Snape went down a very destructive path. Meanwhile, Lily was very happy with James, and Lily Evans soon became Lily Potter when she married James shortly after leaving school. Lily ended up joining the Order of the Phoenix, a group whose sole purpose was to fight Voldemort and his Death Eater ranks, meaning she was fully going against Snape, the person she had once called her best friend. Moving to 1980, we have another one of the worst decisions Snape ever made in his life, and now was telling Voldemort the prophecy he had overheard while at the Hog's Head. The prophecy spoke of a boy born at the end of July who would be responsible for Voldemort's destruction. Voldemort narrowed this down to Harry Potter, the son of Lily and James, which horrified Snape. Lily, the love of his life, was now in danger because of his actions. He begged Voldemort to spare Lily, not caring what happened to James and Harry, and Voldemort actually agreed, though as we know, he would not uphold that promise. Rightly so, Snape did not trust the master he had chosen to serve, so he went to Albus Dumbledore, begging Albus to save Lily. After Albus told Snape that he disgusted him for only caring about Lily and not her husband and child, Snape changed his request, telling Dumbledore to hide the whole family. Dumbledore asked Snape what he would give him in return, and Snape replied saying anything. Snape was ready to do anything for the woman he loved, despite the fact that he had not even talked to her in four years. Snape was relieved when Dumbledore successfully hid them, but everything went wrong when Lily and James put their faith in the wrong person, as Wormtail, one of their best friends, turned them over to the Dark Lord. Moving to October 31st, 1981, Voldemort first killed James, and then killed Lily when she refused to step aside from Harry. The love of Snape's life, his best friend, was gone. Now, in the film, they had those scenes where Snape visited the Potter's home after Lily's death and he held Lily, but that never happened in the book, and for this video, we're going by book canon, so obviously, that's not part of this timeline. In the novel, Snape got the news of Lily's death when Dumbledore called him into his office, and when he was told what happened, Snape made a sound like a wounded animal, and he looked like a man who had lived a hundred years of misery. Dumbledore also told Snape that Lily's son Harry was still alive, but Snape waved this off. That is, until Dumbledore said that the boy had Lily's eyes, and when he asked Snape if he remembered the shape and color of Lily Evans' beautiful green eyes, Snape begged him to stop. Snape then went to a dark place, saying that he wished he were dead instead of her, but Dumbledore told him that if he truly loved her, then his way forward was clear. He told Snape not to let Lily die in vain, and instead, help him protect Lily's son. Snape agreed, but made Dumbledore promise not to tell anyone, and Dumbledore replied saying that he would be hiding the best of Severus. To Dumbledore, Snape was his best self when Lily was involved. Moving to 1991 when Harry came to Hogwarts, Snape spent the rest of his life making sure that Lily's death was not for nothing. He protected Harry over the years, and in 1995, Snape became a double agent, playing the very man who had killed the woman he loved. Snape's love for Lily actually became an advantage when working with Voldemort. The Dark Lord was a master of legilimency, or the act of reading minds, but he was unable to gauge Snape's mind for one reason because Severus's mind was driven by the one thing Voldemort never understood, love. 
His love for Lily was the reason Voldemort never figured out he was a double agent. Going to June of 1997, Snape had a meeting with Dumbledore in which Albus revealed the truth of his plan, that Harry Potter must die. This enraged Snape, saying that he thought they were protecting him all these years for her, for Lily. He was distraught that they were just raising him like a pig for slaughter. When Albus asked if Snape had grown to care for the boy after all, Snape revealed his Patronus to Dumbledore, and even after all these years, 28 years since he had met Lily Evans, his dope Patronus revealed that he still loved her. The magnitude of that love was so strong that even though they had not spoken for 21 years, Snape still had those feelings through and through, which brought Albus Dumbledore to tears. Lily, hey. after all this time, always. Moving to August of 1997, Snape broke into Grimmauld Place, the headquarters of the Order of the Phoenix, and while there, he stumbled upon an old letter that Lily had written to Sirius, along with a picture of her and James watching baby Harry. He immediately recognized Lily's handwriting, and as he read, tears poured down his hooked nose. Snape took the page with Lily's signature, which was accompanied by her handwriting that said, Lots of love, and he tucked it inside his robes. He then ripped the picture that came with it, only keeping the part with Lily, who was laughing in the photo. This was the closest he would ever get to Lily, but it was still more than he ever thought he would get, 16 years after her death. Moving to May of 1998, Snape was slashed and bitten by Voldemort's snake Nagini, and as he lay there dying, the last person he expected to come to his aid did. Harry Potter, the boy he had spent the last two decades protecting for Lily. In his final breath, he told Harry to look at him, and the last thing he saw before he died were his green eyes. The eyes of the woman he loved, Lily Evans. As I said at the beginning of the video, Snape and Lily both lived tragic lives, but for very different reasons. Lily tragically died after just starting her family at the age of 21, and Snape was a man who lived with an enormous amount of regret. A man succumbed by a lasting love that he knew would never be filled, and never had been filled. In the end, both did play a part in the other's life, but it was very one-sided. Lily was able to move on pretty quickly following the downfall of their friendship, but Snape was never able to move on, remembering Lily with his dying breath. And that is the timeline of Lily Evans and Severus Snape. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this story. There are of course many things to go over, like Lily smiling when she saw Snape upside down, Snape calling Lily a mudblood. There are just so many things to go over that could be controversial. So let me hear you talk about it in the comments. Reply to people, start conversations, and just have fun with it. That's all I have for you guys today though, so I will see you in the next video.